In this video, we're going to talk about rendering a floor plan by hand. So the first thing you want to look at is the type of paper you're going to use. So I like to use Graphics 360 paper or vellum paper as long as it's 100%. Stay away from 25% rag content vellum paper. That's only good for sketching with pencil. We're also going to use only gray markers and pens. So here is a set of Prismacolor markers. They have two tips. And here are the pens I like to use. This is a Micron 03. This is a high tech C. This is the finest line. And it takes a couple strokes before it works really well. This one's a Pilot Razor Point. And this is a Vera Thin colored pencil. This is a harder lead than the regular Prismacolor colored pencils. And this is just a regular mechanical pencil. So if you're not confident with your lines, I would stick with pencil first. This is the plan that I printed out from SketchUp. And I'm going to overlay that with my Graphics 360 paper. And what I'm going to make is a composite rendering. It's going to combine my SketchUp render and Photoshop and my hand render together to create a unique type of sketch. So what I'm doing by hand, I'm not trying to be precise uh, very much at all other than using my straight edge here. Uh, you can see I'm overstroking the lines and that's because I want to kind of feature some of my hand mistakes. Uh, one thing that happens when you make renderings in the computer is that everything can be so precise. Um, if you render in SketchUp, it's going to look really precise. Uh, if you're using Photoshop, there can be some error there, but not quite as much as doing something by hand. So I like to kind of give it some texture and some freedom by using hand medium. So I kind of finished up my uh, basic... Uh, fine lines here and now I'm going back in and rendering this marble countertop. So I use a 10% gray first and I'm going to work my way up to a 40 or a 50%. So by layering, starting from lightest to darkest, layering in the value, you can really get some depth in your renderings. And if you're not sure how to render a material, uh, you can print out your reference or you can have the actual material sitting in front of you. Uh, in this case, I have my rendering from SketchUp, the floor plan underneath this, so that's kind of helping me draw the marble there. And I've got a picture of it up on my computer while I'm doing this as well. Okay, so I'm going back in with the smaller fine point tip on the Prismacolor. Okay, jumping ahead here, I added some dark lines. I didn't like how those turned out at all, but I'll show you how we can make that work in Photoshop in the next video. So now I'm laying in the floor. So I'm following the direction of my four lines that I set up from my SketchUp file. And I'm being pretty loose when I do this. I'm starting with the 10% first. And I'll go back in with a 20% and overlay that, give it some more depth. And I'm also going to change the tip here and start getting in some darker lines to show some of the grain in the floor.
here I'm going in with the 30%. I'm really starting to get some of that green in there. So the important thing to remember with rendering by hand, if you're new to rendering completely, uh, rendering by hand comes natural to most people. Even if you're using markers, don't be afraid of putting the marker down uh, because this is going to be a composite rendering. So you have a chance to work over any mistakes that you created when you're rendering by hand um, in Photoshop. And you can also leverage your SketchUp model if that helps you. Um, so again, I'm not 100% happy with some of the things that happened with this rendering, but uh, just the ability to have the freedom to be loose by hand feels really great, and I can fix anything I want in Photoshop. And here's the rendering when it's finished in Photoshop, and we're going to take a look at how to fix our mistakes and uh, add to the drawing in the next video.